So, a lot of you have been asking me to watch the show Baby Reindeer and give a therapist's psychological analysis of the characters who are, of course, based on real people. The story is the true story of Richard Gadd, who is the writer, director and starring as himself within the show. It's unsurprising so many of you wanted me to watch this because it's a brilliant show. Even like in terms of engaging storytelling and directorial decisions, Richard Gadd is a really good director here. And this is perhaps the most nuanced and in-depth portrayal I have ever seen of stalking, of what it's like on both sides, of experiences of SA without that horribly gratuitous edge that you sometimes get in TV, and a really uncomfortable exploration of shame. If you know my Katie series, you'll know shame is something I often talk about, something I wish society talked about more. To summarise the show, Richard Gadd plays himself with his name, and I assume most people's names changed, to Donnie Dunn, a struggling comedian in London who works a job as a bartender when Martha Scott comes into the pub, but she can't afford a drink, so feeling sorry for her, Donnie gives her a free cup of tea. It causes Martha to notice him, to feel that little of connection and then she's back there every day to see him and the situation escalates horribly into one of a very vulnerable but still dangerous and volatile stalker. We also learn later on that Donnie is a survivor of SA from earlier in his life when a successful comedy writer took him under his wing with the pretense of writing scripts together to instead drug and abuse Donnie. And consequently a lot of the feelings that experience leaves him struggling with feed into his situation with Martha. I think it's wonderful, not just how open Richard Gadd is to talk about his experiences here, but to even show sides of himself that he does or did feel shame about, to show a discomfort. I suppose you'd say an ugliness, um, although I think that word gives the wrong connotations. He isn't painting a black and white story here, um, but also to be acting as himself through scenes and experiences that were traumatising for him. I assume a lot of measures were taken to ensure this all felt safe, but even so, this is a hell of a thing to do. I would thoroughly recommend watching the show, with the obvious disclaimer that it could be very triggering. Episode 4 in particular is a difficult watch. But the thing is, I have concerns talking about this show. 95% of the time I stick solely to analysing fictional characters in my videos for a lot of reasons, including the fact it's safe that way. No one is being exposed, we're not gawking into a real person's internal world because the character is imaginary. I made a video all about why I don't like analysing real people, especially not when they're still alive, especially not when they're currently in the public eye so much as the real person Martha Scott is based on. And also Richard Gadd, yes he's chosen to make this and reveal himself in these ways, but that doesn't mean us talking about it can't still be really exposing for him. People on the internet though found the real person Martha Scott is based on, named Fiona, and she was no doubt harassed online and then news reporters came and then she had an hour interview with the famously unlikable Piers Morgan. What began as a true story depicted in a TV show that has no doubt been part of Richard Gadd's own attempt to process his experiences, has now now escalated into something else, and I'm going to try and talk about all of it, but I think let's start with Martha. Twenty years ago, ten years ago, maybe even five, this show wouldn't have been made, and I think the fact it has, um, we shouldn't discount that positive. Not only that someone like Richard Gadds, I think especially a man, felt comfortable enough to share his experiences this openly and through art to process them into something creative, but also I don't think studios would greenlight this kind of thing without a lot of changes 5, 10, 20 years ago. The story would have become much more black and white, we wouldn't have seen that ugliness from Donny as I called it, and also Martha would have been much more sinister, perhaps like a villain character. It would have been an all good versus all bad split, rather than what Jessica Gunning, who is the actress who played Martha, Martha, quite aptly described as a story of two people who feel very lost. Martha is 
dangerous and volatile, and we see a lot of abusive behaviour, absolutely. However, she is also someone incredibly vulnerable who needs help. That's one of the first things Donnie says about her in the show, I think she needs help. Baby Reindeer encourages you not to see Martha as a villain, and that's really, really important here because these things happen. And if you're just dismissing her as crazy or evil or something like that, then it's not the problem we can ever really resolve. When we first see Martha in this show, she has this powerful, intense look of sorrow. And we see it again when she's sitting alone at a bus stop, we see it when she's alone at home. This is how she feels when nobody's looking, and it's such a palpable feeling of worthlessness, nothingness, like you're nothing. And then here's this ray of sunlight, a rare moment of human kindness and connection when someone offers her a free cup of tea. That absolutely can feel powerful, especially in London where everybody ignores everyone and the whole city is horrible, I'm a little biased there, um, but a genuine human emotion you can attach to. All of the bragging and the lies and all of this stuff on the surface is the ego, it's this desperate wall of self-belief to try and spare her from that deeper nothingness. Not just from dumb boasting and bragging to poke holes in and laugh at, this is a thing of psychic survival, but she sits at the bar all day every day. She pretends she's only stopping by quickly and that she's got lots she needs to get on and do because of course she says that, how awfully humiliating it would feel to admit you've got nothing better to do and so she sits and jabbers on all day at rapid sometimes frantic speeds to keep this man Donnie's attention. This man who showed her a brief but bright ray of sunlight. I'm going to speak a little generally here because I, I don't think any of this is going to encapsulate all of her behaviour but I think for the most Martha doesn't strike me as someone hounding a victim although it, it definitely is that but I think for her the 41,000 emails, all of the messages, all of the rapid talking, I think it is, it's not a deliberate intent to hound someone, it's a need to keep his attention, to make sure he's still listening. The frantic desperation, the worry that she's going to float away again like an object drifting out of orbit. For the most, um, I don't think Martha is aware how damaging and abusive her behaviour is. I think in her head that's not how she's seeing it. Not all of the time, I should say, um, but the messages are all so impulsive. Mostly she is caught in this frantic desperation or sometimes anxiety, and then there's other times where all of it flips into rage. Just so angry because he's hurt her so much. He's been so cruel and rejecting me and I need him to see how very angry he's made me. I don't care what lines I cross, I'm not even stopping to consider that, I am just absorbed by this need. Does that make anything excusable? Absolutely not, and there are definitely more calculated aspects to her behaviour. Martha is a very dangerous person. There is a horrible scene of Essay where she gropes him against a wall and he freezes, and I myself have even once talked about an experience I had similar to that. It is not okay. I think in general, most people don't realise how scary and overwhelming it can be just to have someone sending you so many messages like this. I think people think, yeah, well, the content of the messages isn't threatening, so it can't be that bad, but it is, it has a big effect. I think Richard Gadd does a great job of expressing how it felt for him, on top of everything else Martha goes on to do. All the same, here is a person we can somewhat understand. The show doesn't give us all the information about her, but there is enough I could probably make a big, long psychological analysis. I'm not going to, um, for reasons I said earlier, but I think the better we can all understand, the better we can help and prevent this kind of behaviour. In fact, I wouldn't be at all surprised if there are people who watch this show and can relate to Martha. While she is an extreme example, you might be able to relate to some of her feelings at the core of it and to recognise that about yourself and be aware of some of your behaviour. This deserves to be looked at with empathy. Martha explains in the final episode why she calls Donnie her baby reindeer, and it's because she had a toy baby reindeer as a child that she says was one of the only good things growing up. This object of care and kindness that protects her, but is also something she can protect and can be doing something good, something meaningful and worthwhile by trying to protect. To her, Donnie is a very similar object. The way Martha switches like a light bulb the second Donnie is close to expressing any vulnerability or pain. She is all there for it with an intense attentiveness, like 
oh my god, he is showing me his hurt, I can heal this, I can be the person who saves him, instead of it feeling like the reverse all the time, and instead of the focus being directly on my need to save him. And then they have some odds uncomfortable but occasionally genuine moments of connection. Donnie tells her he is afraid not that people think less of him but that people don't think of him at all. That's something he's able to open up to her and then she tells him that she wishes there was a zip under people's chins that run down to their belly so she can unzip them and climb inside. A moment that is chilling but also faintly humorous and there's this total childlike vulnerability to the way she says it. Five or ten years ago, that scene would have been played as all-out sinister. Definitely one aspect, yes, but also not the entirety. I might cut down some of what I've just said, um, because I didn't mean to say that much, and again, I'm conscious this is a real person. In a way, that's why I said it, because I don't want people to treat her like some demonic evil. But there is also a line here that I personally feel I should be careful about crossing. We'll explore more of this in a moment, um, let's talk about Donnie for now. I think Robert Gadd does a fantastic job of reflecting his own experiences with enough awareness and insight to depict it very well here. The show does a great job of explaining how he feels very succinctly. I, I may make a separate video specifically about the situation between Donnie and Darian and S.A., but for now, mainly what I want to talk about, my one criticism is that I don't think Donnie, perhaps not even Richard Gadd himself outside of writing this, uh, has quite reached the end of his healing because the feelings of shame and self-hatred can be really intense here unsurprisingly with what he's gone through. Um, you see, Donnie's girlfriend Terry raises the important question, why hasn't Donnie gone to the police sooner about Martha? Why hasn't he made everything clear to them? Why hasn't he set clearer boundaries? All of that comes with a multifaceted answer, but generally Terry is suggesting it's because Donnie not necessarily wants Martha stalking him, but that he gets something out of it that is unconsciously stopping him from preventing her behaviour. And on the one hand, and, okay, let's go along with this idea for the moment. In many ways, Terry is correct. I mentioned earlier that Donnie expresses his fear that people don't think of him at all. Well, in steps Martha, who appears to think of him constantly. Martha appears at a time in Donnie's life where he is largely bereft of emotional support, and again, there are some moments of genuine connection with her. Donnie himself in the show says, I have a convicted stalker stalking me. I have a convicted stalker stalking me. As we see him accept her friend request on Facebook, the implication being that he is wondering why me, I must be worth something more. There is a little positive hit to his ego there. And there are a lot of other things too, we could probably say Donnie might have gotten out of this situation, which is a phrase that itself raises questions, um, but yes, all relationships, all dynamics are two-way. Robert Gadd is very good at showing how some of his behaviour does lean into Martha and leaves him more open and more vulnerable, and we then see Donnie feeling shame about himself when he realises that. Terry breaks up with him because of it, and there's this feeling, this worry of what if I am the problem, what if I enjoy being stalked, what if I in some way deserve it. And again, feelings of shame considering what he's gone through are absolutely expected. I think that feeling and that worrying question of what if I enjoy it, that is an important feeling to dig down into. But it isn't the truth. At one point, Donnie starts to wonder if he misses Martha, and therefore, oh god, does that mean something is wrong with me? And it just makes me want to reach into the show and tell him it's fine to have mixed feelings. You know, you get with people who grew up with terribly abusive parents that they might also have fond memories of that one time their dad took them fishing, or rare times where there were moments of care. Experiences following abuse often are very confused and nuanced, it's okay to feel things like that sometimes. But just because a person might have fond memories of fishing with their dad doesn't necessarily mean they want to move back in with him. It's okay for Donnie to miss certain aspects of his experience with Martha without feeling shame about that. So we get the growth where Donnie becomes aware how his behaviour sometimes leans into Martha, but we never quite get the growth where he realises that's not his fault. That doesn't mean he enjoys it or is actively uh, complicit. What it means is he was vulnerable to Martha, and before that vulnerable to Darian. 
To jump in in the edit, I just wanted to add that I think in relation to Darian, Donnie in the show mentions that he kept going back to this abuser because of, I think the phrase is his lust for fame. And he talks about it as this greed for fame and success and that he would put himself through this for that. And I really don't think that's being fair to himself. Obviously, we understand why he feels like that at the time, but I think outside of the show and the sort of effect and message this show might have, I think it's important to have a beat later on where he can start to feel, no, that's not the case. I shouldn't be blaming myself for that there. He was lost at sea, desperately searching for a means of survival, and Martha was prodding him with the idea that she might be that. Donnie showed a lot of other behaviours as well, some of them healthy, but he was also vulnerable. But if all of this is still great stuff being explored with so much nuance in the show, and that the world can learn so much from, what are my concerns? Kirsty has been telling me a lot about the reaction to this show. She has TikTok and she doesn't live under as much of a rock as I do. I like to imagine most people had a positive response to this show. I think they did. I think most people aren't always the loudest people online. Um, but of those who are loud, it would seem there have been four general responses other than the positive ones. Um, one is to blame Donny, to completely misunderstand everything I was just attempting to set out and argue that he wanted it, he enjoyed it, he deserved it, which I just find so horrible. Two is to go one step further and dismiss his whole experience as a lie. We know how difficult it is for anyone, men in particular, to come forwards about this kind of thing. Three is a massive web of detective work and accusations left, right and centre trying to figure out who the unknown comedy writer that the character Darian O'Connor is based on. And four is that the internet quite quickly found the real Martha, a woman named Fiona, and harassed her. Unfortunately, I think the first two reactions confirm exactly why this is such a cutting-edge show to be making, and why five or ten years ago it wouldn't have been made at all. A lot of people still, it seems, struggle to understand it, not the majority, and I hope the wider long-term effect of Baby Reindeer is to change these kind of opinions, and to be part of something that does promote more widespread understanding. In terms of points three and four, Robert Gadd himself has come forwards and told the internet to not try and find the real people, that's not the point of the show, but to some extent it's inevitable when you don't do more to change the characters in ways that might mask their identities. There is a certain irony to people stalking and harassing the real Martha Scott, but I think a lot of people mistake that for some righteous sense of poetic justice, when it's not. She was prosecuted for her actions. We do need a police force that is more open and more accessible for people to come forwards, takes reports more seriously. I think we need her to be given support and help from professionals who know how to help. I don't think online harassment helps or changes anything. But then in swooped the reporters, and I should just be honest here, I, I really don't like Piers Morgan. I think his uncensored show is one of the worst things I have ever seen when it's cropped up before. There he was to interview the real woman, Fiona, and I just could not be more negative about the idea of this interview than I already am. Why why the hell are you doing this? It's an absolute car crash for the first 30 minutes straight where Piers Morgan just keeps asking her, did you send 41,000 emails to Robert Gads? And she keeps denying it with what seems to be obvious lies that she may or may not believe herself. I personally am of the opinion that whilst certain aspects of the story may have been changed for the sake of attempting to mask identities or for the drama to flow better, whilst I imagine that to be the case, I still think generally 90 to 95% of the show is true to reality, rather than what Fiona says in this interview. That's my opinion, but I don't think the opinions of who's right and wrong necessarily is the point here. That's the first half an hour of the interview though, then eventually he stabs at her with a question about her childhood, as though she's going to suddenly talk openly and vulnerably about it, of course she doesn't. Then they fall back into the same agonising cycle of him asking her to admit to something, trying to catch her to out, making a total spectacle of this woman. He even asks if she'd do a lie detector test at some point, like, <laughs> is he Jeremy Kyle now, what is this? Don't get me wrong. 
if Fiona wanted to tell her side of the story, she has absolute right to do that. It seems that's what she came out intending to do on a conscious level. And she speaks with total lawyer-like professionalism. She never feels comfortable during the interview, which is unsurprising, but she's trying to present herself as someone respectable, someone undeserving of harassment. Although nobody deserves harassment. I think that's consciously what her intentions were, but I think she's also understandably panicked by this sudden public attention she's gotten and harassment online, then she's perhaps impulsively, maybe even desperately jumping to a solution that she thinks might help resolve it, and I think Piers Morgan is exploiting that. He has very different intentions, he is inviting no space for her to express her feelings, nor is there any conversation here about, you know, hey, nobody deserves harassment, okay? Which even if if this interview was that stuff, I wouldn't feel certain Fiona is 100% sure and conscious of her intentions of if she thinks this is a good idea. Either way, it's an hour of Fiona being made to look a fool and Piers having interest only in trying to get her to admit to something she'd find humiliating to be admitting on national television, and therefore avoids doing at all costs. That's not letting her tell her side. I'm not sure Fiona is able to tell her side, and also I think the whole idea of telling her side does come with an implication that Richard Gadd was lying, which I'm also uncomfortable about. Either way, this interview just opens the space to laugh at her and bully her and treat her like some spectacle, which is the exact opposite of what the show went to such great lengths to portray as a woman whose behaviour we should absolutely criticise, but not without empathy. She is not a freak to point and laugh at. Piers Morgan exploits her for millions of views, apparently only paying her £250. I don't know if that's true. If it is, that's also pretty horrible. Um, I think he's made her situation worse. I think that also makes it harder for her to come to terms with her experiences, all of it actively harming the very point of the show in the first place. If this interview absolutely had to happen, then it should have been pre-recorded in an environment where Fiona feels more comfortable and where she can actually have the space and time to think through what she wants to express. Because instead what we get is someone just caught up in the defences trying um, to save a sense of reputation by completely denying everything that's set out in the story and trying to turn it back on him. And that just helps no one. I think that's shooting herself in the foot and I think it's sad to see her do that. I don't know, after all that time I spent looking at Dr. Phil, I just really don't like the way people are often exploited by these kind of shows. Even when they're willing to go on and think it will be good for them, they still often get exploited. Ethically, I do also have to wonder if Netflix could have done more. Definitely should have done more to mask the identities, but quite possibly reaching out to Fiona prior to the show's release to warn her, to offer press-related advice, let her ask questions, help her understand. I don't know. On, on the one hand, that's a very bad, potentially even horrible idea. This obviously isn't an area of mine, but I just wanted to raise it because this is an interesting and strange situation to occur. There's also obviously the ethical question of whether or not these people should have their identities hidden. Obviously the law comes to play in here, and obviously Robert Gadd has said he wants their identities to be hidden, not for people to seek out who they are. If everything Robert Gadd says is true, I, sh I should be saying that, I should be saying allegedly. Um, I would like to hope Fiona hasn't stalked anybody since, because no one deserves to be put through that, and Fiona deserves to be in a better place where she doesn't feel compelled to do that. If so, I'd like to hope she is able to live her life peacefully, ideally with support, and that this situation doesn't cause her to spiral in unhealthy ways. And then beyond that, yeah, talking about this show questions my own personal ethics. I am absolutely not going to offer any hypothetical diagnoses for the character Martha, and I don't feel comfortable with what I have said about Martha, or even Donnie. No way am I going to jump in with a big old psychological analysis about a person I've never met where I therefore might get a lot of things wrong in hypothesis and might be encouraging him or other people to see him in a way that's wrong. I'm not going to do that for either of them, but at the same time, is it my duty to promote a more positive view of Martha or clear up the misunderstandings of Donnie? Especially when Piers I think has contributed to such a negative view. To hope I can provide a distinction between seeking to understand a person and seeking entertainment from them. Um, I don't entirely know what the answer is, so 
I'd be curious to know what you feel. Otherwise, comment your thoughts, like the video, subscribe, maybe even support me on Patreon, but hopefully see you next time. And as ever, a special thank you goes to Flying Spider, Grace, Kellyanne Davidson, Luke Hoare, Michael Gallagher, Chad Bramwell and Joshua C. Follier. Thank you.